Today I'm going to show you how to create this procedural leaf pattern. This is customizable to a point and it's just a plane with transparency. This is what our end node setup is going to look like. To set up our scene I'm going to get rid of this cube and bring in a plane. I'm going to change the whole middle area to my shader editor and put that material that was on our cube onto our plane then hit N to get rid of that shelf on the right. Then I'm going to change this top right to my 3D viewport. Make it a little larger as well so we can see what's going on. And uh, just zoom in a bit and hold down Z. Move your mouse up to go into rendered mode. You can use Cycles or EV for this here. Uh, I'm going to use Cycles. You can use EV. Uh, but one thing you need to do is come down here to the material properties and scroll down and just change blend mode and shadow mode to something other than opaque. You know, something like alpha hashed or something. But I'm going to change to Cycles here. And I'm going to change to GPU Compute. Uh, you can do that if you have it available. It'll make it a little faster. So I'll start working on the texture. I'm going to bring in a texture coordinate node and come out of object. And I'm going to build a radial array setup that I've done a couple different times now by bringing in a gradient texture. I'll place it here. And I'm going to change this to radial. Next, I'm going to search for a math node and place it on the end here. And open this up and hit M to change it to multiply. I'm going to change this to 4 for now. And I used to have a setup where I would do multiply, fraction, subtract, absolute value, and then another multiply. But somebody pointed out it's easier if I just use the ping pong setting on the math node. Then I'm going to change this to 0.5. And we can see that this uh, multiply here controls how many sections there are. And each section goes from 0 to 0.5 to 0 to 0.5. So if I take one more multiply and set this to 2, we now have 0 to 1, 0 to 1, and this number here controls how many sections we have. Next I'm going to search for an RGB curves node and just place it right on the end there. Let's move this stuff over as well to give us a bit more space to work. And I'm also going to do something uh, back here as well. Go back to the object output of this texture coordinate and I'm going to add on another gradient texture, this time set to spherical. Then I'm going to search for an invert node and just place it right here. And I'm going to bring in uh, another math node. I'll just duplicate this multiply and change it to subtract because I want to subtract uh, this invert from this RGB curves right here. So let's see what this looks like. Um, you know, that's already kind of interesting. That kind of looks like leaves already. Uh, but we're going to do one more dimension here of control. So I'm just going to undo those changes to that RGB curves node there. And to duplicate this, place it right here and run the invert into the color down here. And then what we're going to do is duplicate this subtract and run this RGB curves into here. So now we have this controller. Um, you know, I'm going to put this at 0.5 for now, but we can adjust that if we want. And now I'm going to add both of these together. So that plus this here. Let's go ahead and change this to add. And we're going to run this into the top. And this is going to be into the bottom here. So now we have this setup right here. And we have two RGB curves nodes that we can control and create shapes with. This setup right here, by the way, comes from watching a Simon Tom's video. So uh, thanks a lot, Simon, for putting this stuff out there. Really helpful. Let's talk about creating this leaf here. Uh, I'm going to show you the rough outline of what I had just by building this really quick here. And you can do it like I had, or you can do it however you want. Uh, there is a lot of possibilities here, and a lot of things that look good, a lot of things that look bad. It's really just playing around with it to uh, just kind of understand the results you can get. So this is more or less what my bottom one looked like here, and then this one here. Um, let's just change this around a little bit to maybe something like this. You know what, I don't really like that. Something like that looks a little bit better. Uh, that looks good. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to move forward from here, but feel free to play around with this here. And remember, this is going to change some stuff as well. So if you want to make it smaller or larger, make sure to change this subtract node right here. So my thought process for making something uh, that instead goes like all the way around like this was to kind of set up this radial array here uh, on the top half, but on the bottom half, do something different. So I know that if we feed this radial gradient plus this uh, spherical gradient into this setup, 
it has this output right here. So I thought, instead, why don't I set up uh, another spot here where I bring in a separate x, y, z. So I'll place it right here. And in fact, I'll just move this stuff up a little bit to give me a little bit more room. I'm going to come out of the y output of the separate x, y, z, and I'm going to bring in a map range node. This is a pretty easy node to use for this uh, instance here. Basically, I'm just going to change that first value to negative 1. So uh, it just remaps it so that uh, you know it goes all the way from the bottom to the top, instead of just being from the middle, which is what it is uh, as a default coming out of object there. Then in the bottom, we've got this gradient texture here. So I thought instead of doing that, why don't I come out of the x and feed it into a math node that I then set to absolute value. And I can do that by opening this up and hitting B. I could set it up where we have another one of these lines of math nodes plus the RGB curves. Uh, it would get really busy. Instead, I'm going to do something else that's a little simpler. I'm just going to move these down a bit and bring in a mix RGB. Place it right here. Then I'm going to plug this map range into the bottom here. And I'm going to feed another uh, one of these x outputs from the separate x, y, z into another math node. And this time, I'm going to set this to less than. And uh, you know what? That should be on the y. So there we go. And I'm going to set this to 0. And then I'm going to plug this into the mix RGB. So what's going on here is uh, basically on the top half of this image, we're going to get this gradient texture. And on the bottom half, because it's white going into that factor, we're going to get this map range node. So it looks something like this here, where it's a gradient going up here, and then it starts to go in a radial pattern, and then back down here. At first, I had it so that this gradient was going from black here to white here. It wasn't really necessary. It just overcomplicated things. I got the same result setting it up like this. Then I'm going to do the same thing down here. Uh, we're going to grab another mix, and I'm going to place it after this invert here because we don't want to invert this uh, along with that gradient texture. It's already in the right inversion. We need to make sure we plug this into the bottom, and we can use the same less than node just to plug right into the factor. And let's see what our result looks like here. Not very good yet. We need to do some adjustments. I'm going to grab this multiply here and place it on uh, these two lines right before this mix RGB, just right after this gradient texture, and then again after this map range node. I'm going to change this top one to 2, and then this bottom one is going to be set to 3. I also want to create one way to adjust the slant of these leaves down here, and that's going to be by duplicating this separate x, y, z. And I'm going to plug, uh, instead of this one, the y going in there, I'm going to move this y into there instead. So I can put something before this separate x, y, z that doesn't affect this one here. And that is going to be a vector rotate. And uh, this allows me to rotate this part here. So we're halfway there. I then need to bring in a vector math node. Just place it right here. Open this up and hit B. And you'll change it to absolute value. And now we're going to be able to rotate this around and have it uh, reflected in the image there. There is a limitation with this one because of the mask. So you could change the shape of this mask, but uh, I won't worry about it here. I'm just going to leave this pretty low, something like 8 for now. And I can always adjust this if I want to. I'm also going to duplicate this RGB curves node here with Control shift d So I leave it attached to that mix RGB. And I'm going to duplicate this mix RGB too and plug it into these two areas. Then plug this less than into the factor. So then, uh, you know, I'm not going to worry about this yet, but this allows me to control both of these leaves independently now, which is nice because, um, you know, it acts differently when it's coming out of this gradient versus uh, coming out of this separate x, y, z, and absolute. So I'm just going to undo that change for now, but now I can control them separately. I'm also going to come to this subtract node and just raise this number a bit. I find that uh, it looks a little bit better at about 0.9 or 1. And depending on what your RGB curves nodes look like, it might be different. So just play around with these values till you get something that looks good here. I'm just going to organize things a little bit before we go any further. Uh, just put a frame around these four here and call this radial. And uh, I'm going to put a frame around these here with Control J. 
and just F2 to rename it, and we'll call that linear. And I guess this part here is not part of the linear. That is uh, the mask. And then all of this right here, this is our leaf shape. So um, take some time. I'm not going to spend too much time organizing this here because uh, I don't want to waste too much time. But uh, it is really worth it. Once this gets more complicated, you won't regret organizing it. I took the wrong node out. I'm going to hit Alt-P with this one here. Just move this into this area and do the same thing with this one here. This is the mask node. So my next thought is I wanted to start building a twig that all these leaves were going to come off of. And I found that if I come out of this mix RGB right here, this actually looks pretty good already. So why don't I start from this point? I'm going to bring in an invert node because I want to invert this gradient here. So now we have white in the middle. Then I'm going to bring in a color ramp and just place it right here. I'm going to change the type to constant. And then if I bring down this white slider, you can see it changes the size of the white shape in the middle. It's kind of an archway shape. So I'm going to leave this quite high, 0.985. So we have kind of a very skinny white shape with no gradient. I wanted to make this base of the twig a little wider than it is up top. So I'm going to come out of object and go into a separate x, y, z. And let's just come out of y. And then I'm going to bring two math nodes in, an add and then a multiply. And then I'm going to add this to, uh, you know, right before this color ramp, right after this invert. And if we see the result, um, we can see this add just changes the size of the white shape now. And this multiply changes the shape. So if I wanted it like this here, we can see the base is a little bit thicker than the top now. Things are looking a little bit too uniform. So I'm going to add some noise texture uh, right here after the texture coordinate. I'm not going to add it to this bottom part here. I'm just going to add it to this top part for now. And I'm going to change the scale to 1.6. The detail is going to be 4. And the roughness is going to be 0.4. Then I'm going to bring in a mix RGB, place it right afterwards, and uh, I'm going to run object into color 2 and change this factor to 0.7. So we can see it's a little off center. To correct that, I'm going to duplicate this mix RGB and set this to subtract. And then these two factors just need to add up to 1. So I'm going to set this to 0.3, uh, but I'm also going to create a way to control this. Um, I'm going to bring in a value node, place it right here, and bring in a math node, place it right here, open this up and hit S so it changes to subtract. I'm going to plug this into the second socket there and change that first one to 1. I'm plugging this value to the factor on the first one, and this is going to go into the factor on the second one. So now we can adjust this, and both of these numbers will always add up to 1. I'm going to change this to 0.7. Let's look at adding some color we can start to bring our leaves to life there. I'm going to bring in a color ramp right after this add at the very end. And let's change this. Um, I'm going to change this bottom to 0 0.064. Then I'm going to add two more in here. I'm just going to do it one at a time, 0.21 for this next one. And then this third one is going to be 0 0.35. Then I'm going to take this existing highest point and change it to 0.46. I'm going to change the bottom most color to kind of a dark green color. It doesn't really matter too much what uh, color you choose. You can always change them around. This second one, let's set this at kind of a lighter green color. Maybe something like this looks pretty good. And uh, we're just going to duplicate these. So this is going to be that second color again. And then this is going to be that dark green color again. You can kind of see as we adjust these, this far right slider is going to be this shape in the center of the leaves. And then the far outside is just going to be kind of the cutoff for where there's you know dark green versus light green. I was trying to figure out why it looked weird because uh, you know the stems in these middle leaves here 
are larger than the ones as they go towards the bottom and then they kind of completely disappear. Uh, I finally figured it out. It's because I mistakenly plugged this invert into this subtract right here and instead it should be coming from this mix RGB down here which is uh, you know coming out of this absolute whatever. So I'm going to plug that into there instead. And now you can see that these are all kind of the same thickness. And now I'm going to play around with this second one here, because this is controlling the bottom uh, leaves here. And I'm just going to bring this part down a little bit, make that stock in the middle a little smaller. Something like this is uh, starting to look pretty good. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to create uh, two other branches of these two um, RGB curves here. I'm just going to grab this top one here and this very top one here. I guess the middle and the top and hit Control Shift D so I uh, duplicate them while remaining attached there and hit Alt P so that they uh, kind of break out of their frame there. I'm going to do one and then one more as well. Just the same thing twice. Then I'm going to grab these three math notes here and hit Shift D and uh, let's Alt P those guys as well so they're outside of the frame and then let's Shift D one more time. We're just going to hook these up the same way we had them before, just like this here. And uh, this mix RGB is going to go into the bottom here each time, just like that. Oh, they should be plugged into this one instead. So let's unplug that and uh, let's plug that in right there. I'm just going to try and clean this up a little bit here. That looks better. So this color ramp here, I'm actually going to take this off and just put it right here and use it on this one instead. And uh, basically what we're going to be going for here is just a similar leaf outline. We won't actually touch this yet. Uh, I won't worry about that. And this top one, uh, we're going to change this so we just want to be masking out the stems here because we want to be applying a different material here, maybe something like a brown or something. So let's look at this here for a second. I'm going to reset both of these and just try and mask out the stems. Um, maybe something like this here actually gets me pretty close already. So I can always touch this up, but uh, I'll just leave it like this for now. Next, I'll bring in a mix RGB. I'll just place it right here for a moment. And then I'm going to run this color ramp with the green into the bottom socket. And uh, I will run this mix RGB, or pardon me, this add into the factor of the mix RGB. And then I'll bring in a color ramp so I can control the fall off here. Let's look at this for a second. We can see I can adjust uh, the masking right there. So if you want to switch these around. So it's like this here, because then what we can do is come over here and adjust this color. Um, or I could go like this and just plug this into that top one and adjust this color right here. Uh, but uh, either way, I'm just going to make this kind of a darker brown color. It doesn't really matter what I set it to. And then I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. See what effects I can get. I think this looks pretty good for now. And uh, I'm happy with that brown color. Next, I'd like to set up a mask for the entire thing, you know, masking out these leaves and this stem. So I've got this stem all ready to go. Why don't I bring something similar up here to these leaves? And, uh, you know, instead of masking out like that, it'll be something more like this here. And then what I'll do is I'll just take these two and add them together. I'll just borrow this uh, add right here. Hit Alt P to get it out of that frame. Let's just add these together. I'm going to grab this principled shader from the beginning and not put it there. I'm going to bring it up here. And let's just plug this mix RGB into the base color. I'd also like to get this stem color info here. So instead of going from this uh, constant one here, let's Create a new color ramp. I'm going to hit Control Shift D, and that duplicates it while leaving it attached. Let's change this to linear, which is the default there. I'm going to bring the white to the top and the black nearly to the top as well 
we see that there, um, we still need to make it a bit skinnier. Something like this looks pretty good. I'm just going to feed this into a mix RGB, plug this into the top, and then I'm going to plug, uh, or not plug, but I'm just going to change these colors around. This top one is going to be black, and this one here is just going to be the color of my stem. I'm just going to make it like kind of a brown color like that there. Then I'm going to feed this all into another principal BSDF here, uh, just like this. And I've got these two principal BSDFs here. I'm going to mix them together like this here. And we can use our mask that we created earlier, either this one or this one, really. I'm going to use this bottom one here. Let's plug this in, see what it looks like. It's looking pretty good. And the last thing I'd like to do is bring in a transparent node because we're going to mix this with this existing mix RGB here and then plug this other mask that we created right here into this guy. So it's just opposite. We need to swap these around. And there we go. We've got our leaf. I'm going to create a second plane just to put right underneath it there and then move it a little higher so we can kind of see the effect of the transparency. So going to organize this a little bit further here. Why don't we uh, put all this in a frame and we'll just call this main stem. And then this is going to be inner leaf shape, I guess. Doesn't really matter what you name these. Sometimes I have trouble figuring out names during the tutorials here, like right now. Uh, but, you know, whatever. This is going to be the leaf stem mask. And uh, one last thing that I did too is uh, I used a Voronoi to add a little bit of texture to each leaf too. So let's just do that really briefly here too. I brought in a Voronoi. I'm going to hit Control T and plug object into the mapping node there. And in fact, uh, we don't really need this mapping node, so I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to bring in a noise texture, place it right here, and then bring in a mix RGB, place it right here. And uh, let's set this up to 10 for the noise scale and 0.9 for the factor on the mix RGB. And then for the Voronoi, let's change it to distance to edge. Take a look at it there. The scale is going to be 20. And then I'm going to bring in a color ramp for right after here. And the black is going to be really close to the bottom. I'm going to bring it up to 0 0.01 to make it slightly thicker. And the white is going to come down to 0.12. So uh, much more white in each cell area. Then I'm going to take this green color ramp that I have down here and Control Shift D to duplicate it while we're leaving it attached to this uh, inner leaf shape area here. And then I'm just going to reset the color ramp. This is going to be a mask for where I'm going to allow this texture to appear. So I'm going to bring in a mix RGB, and this is going to be fed into the factor here. And then I'm going to feed this into the bottom socket. So if you look here, and I'm going to change this to white as well. If you look here, um, we can see based on where this is here, the strength either increases or decreases for this cell pattern here around uh, you know this general area here. So um, just play around with that. If you want it stronger, you need to bring this white down and uh, this black as well. It's going to kind of control how far it stretches out. Then we're going to take this and mix it in before uh, it gets to this mix RGB just along this line right here. So I'm going to duplicate this mix, place it here, run this into the socket one, change this to multiply. Let's just see what's going on. I'm going to bring this to the top. And uh, basically, we just get this like little, you know, cell patterns. It's kind of uh, tricky to get exactly what I wanted, but this was kind of close, anyways, to the effect I wanted. And if we look at the end result, we can see that gives it a little bit more visual interest. Let's go to the beginning of our pattern here, where I've got this noise texture set up. Uh, I'm going to change this to 4D because what that allows us to do is now uh, with this W uh, setting here, we can flip through this and get different settings each time we do. Uh, maybe this is a little distracting. I'll move this down a little bit and just blow it up a little bit. And maybe just change the 
material to an emission shader, just so it's you know less distracting anyways. So anyways, we can flip through this W, get a different setting each time. Some of them will look a little bit better than others, obviously. You can change this angle here. Um, and maybe you're not happy with the way that this starts or stops here. You know, maybe you want more separation between the radial and the linear pattern. You could change this map note, map range note here. I can see that this is a spelling mistake, linear. Um, anyway, this one here, I actually had it at negative 0.85, I believe, for my final render. And you can see the twigs here. Maybe they're not quite even, so why don't we go to this part here, and I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. It's actually a, a bit better maybe there. Not quite like that, but... Yeah, anyways, play around with it until um, you're happy with the result. Actually, one last thing I'll do is bring in a value node, place it right here, and I'm just going to duplicate this multiply and duplicate it again. Change this bottom one to three, change this value to one, and I'll plug it into the top sockets of each of these multiplies, and then plug it into uh, this multiply here and this multiply down here. And now I've got one value that I can use to control how many of these leaves appear. One more thing I'm going to fine tune is uh, just down by this twig. Uh, color ramp right here where we had it set to linear. If I drag this up a little bit higher and I'm going to do that by dragging this slider here and holding down shift so it fine tunes it. You can see on the right that we get that kind of black to brown gradient. So I'm going to put it at about 0 0.990. Uh, that looks pretty good. I like the look of that. And then if we come up to this area, the inner leaf shape, we can adjust these RGB curves and uh, you can see this black outline on the leaf. That was intentional, and it comes from these RGB curves here. So just by making these slightly smaller, we can increase or decrease that outline. You can see this area, is it going to increase the black outline on the outer edge? And this is going to increase the black outline on the inner area, you know, etc. So play around with that. Uh, you can get some pretty cool outcomes just from adjusting these color ramps here. And again, these ones are just for the twigs right here, the little bases of the leaves. So once you're happy with this pattern right here, uh, you could even take your leaf and duplicate it with Shift D, and then maybe rotate it a little bit. You have to make sure it's not in the exact same spot. So I'm going to move it down a tiny bit on the Z axis. Let's view it from the top there again. And I'm going to shrink this down, maybe just move it like this. And uh, then I'm going to change the material for that second one there. Maybe let's make it at like 0.6. Looks good. And we'll change this W value. So maybe something like this here. I'll just move this. Maybe like that. Whatever. Anyways, you can kind of see uh, if you wanted to use it like something like this, you could. Obviously, it won't look great from all angles, but it uh, looks okay. You know, it looks pretty cool. It's something. If you've got this in a scene and it doesn't look quite right, you could also consider adding some translucency here as well. Just bring in a translucent shader and just feed the same color that you've got going into this principal BSDF into this translucent shader. Then let's bring in an add shader. Place it right here, and I'm just going to put this right in here. Uh, it's just a really simple thing. Now light is going to be able to go through certain parts of the mesh, not through these twigs, but through these leaves. It's going to look a little bit better. Okay, that's it for today. I uh, hope you could follow along and see what I was doing. I know it got a little complicated in some parts, so if you are feeling confused, just let me know in the comments. I'll see what I can do to uh, clear that up for you. Uh, thanks for watching.